A very good evening everybody and welcome to our Thursday evening Bible Thought from St Michael at the Northgate Church in Oxford. And our phrase that we are looking at today is from Isaiah chapter 42. Here is my servant whom I uphold, my chosen one in whom I delight. I will put my spirit on him, he will bring justice to the nations. He will not shout or cry out or raise his voice in the streets. A bruised reed he will not break, and a smouldering wick he will not snuff out. In faithfulness he will bring forth justice. He will not falter or be discouraged till he establishes justice on earth. In his teaching the islands will put their hope. Perhaps it wasn't a phrase that made people look up startled and shocked and surprised. Perhaps it was a phrase that quietly brought in a comfort and reassurance. A bruised reed he will not break, a smouldering wick he will not snuff out. And we are given a big picture here of, of, of the, the, the champion coming to bring justice to the whole world. And maybe this would seem a little bit scary, unsure, we're not quite sure how this is going to look like, what will be said. I don't know if you've ever had to plan to go into a conversation that may have been a little bit scary and then not quite sure how it would work out. And then you realise the person you were talking to was absolutely determined to look after you, to make sure that you, as a bruised reed, a smouldering wick, was not put out, was not broken. In the same way, the, the servant of the Lord who is coming, later on, later on in Isaiah, this will be more fleshed out as the forthcoming Messiah himself. He is coming. This feels very big, but a bruised reed he will not break, and a smouldering wick he will not snuff out. Just a word or two, if I may, about justice. Uh, apparently, in Isaiah, it's used in a very big sense. One commentator says this, It is nothing less than to put God's plans for his people into full effect, and to make the truth about the Lord Israel's God known everywhere especially the fact that he alone is the sovereign creator and lord of history. Justice here, the servant who is bringing justice, nothing less than to put God's plans for his people into full effect. And part of that full effect is that the bruised reeds are not going to be broken. So what is there here for us to ponder? Well, perhaps first we can look at the life of Christ and notice all the people whom he met who were feeling a little bit bruised or perhaps the flame of their emotional spiritual life felt very low and flickery and Jesus always treats them with respect with compassion and kindness and healing the conversations were a little bit different different with those who felt very strong and those who felt that they had no need of any help but for those who knew they were bruised Christ treated and engaged with with deep respect, a bruised reed he will not break. And leading on from that, perhaps, there is that realisation that it's OK for us to be aware of those times when we feel bruised, those times when we feel that the flame of faith is burning very little, maybe only now smouldering. And perhaps it's good to reflect and to think, how has it got to this? Where have the bruises come from? What perhaps has happened? that has made our faith grow less. So we reflect on this so we can know that we are indeed bruised and in need of help and confident that a bruised reed he will not break. We may remember the words of Christ in Matthew 11. Come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy, and my burden is light. The word translated easy there isn't really just the opposite of when things are tough and difficult. It's more in, more in common with the word ease, that this fits. And so that the yoke, that the wooden beam across the oxen that's used as an image for our calling, it fits us, we can be at ease, with it because a bruised reed Christ will not break he will not put on the wrong sort of yoke 
There's also just in the verse before we may note, he will not shout or cry out or raise his voice in the streets. We do live in quite a shouty world, especially perhaps on social media. And here we are reminded that Christ doesn't shout aggressively in the street. He tends to deal personally, one to one. His conversation with the, with the Zacchaeus is behind closed doors. And then the verse after the bruised reed verse, he will not falter or be discouraged. And occasionally perhaps we may feel that we falter or are discouraged, or we may feel that Christ has forgotten us and his eyes are elsewhere, but he does not falter and he is not discouraged. He will lead us safely through. But then of course there is our calling as well. We are the body of Christ and if we believe that Jesus does not break bruised reeds, if we believe that Jesus does not extinguish the smouldering wick, where are we in that with our neighbours, with our friends and families? Do we sometimes seek to crush a little bit too much? Do we sometimes seek to extinguish just once too often? We can do it unconsciously as well as consciously. There's quite a big challenge here. If Christ is the one that we're following and a bruised reed he will not break, then those are those footsteps in which we should walk. He will not falter or be discouraged and we are called not to falter or be discouraged as well. That's sometimes really difficult and hence we are simply called to walk with Christ who will keep us going. Many years ago in the Lake District I was attempting with a school party the, the, the steep and narrow striding edge on the way to Helvellyn and I was undoubtedly faltering and certainly discouraged. I'd never been on a long walk before, let alone anyone, uh, anything like this. And I didn't have the right shoes and it was cold and misty and it did not feel good. And a fellow pupil, an older pupil called Stan, saw me dropping behind. He came back to me and said, uh, I will be like your brother, just stay with me. And Stan did not falter or discourage or be discouraged. We may hear our cat, uh, who is feeling a bit faltering. Excuse me for a moment. Stan did not falter and he was not, not discouraged. Jesus did not falter and was not discouraged. And he seeks to walk with us. And in walking with him, we can make it through always assured of that wonderful quiet promise that a bruised reed he will not break and a smouldering wick he will not snuff out may we be people of hope and assurance this day and may god bless us to share that with others amen thank you so much for listening